So today you join me and we're going to have a look at doing some lure fishing on, uh, on my local canal. The world has been a crazy place with the pandemic and lots of people have taken up lure fishing for the first time, which is fantastic. You've probably seen on the Foxways channel that we've covered lots of different fundamentals from spooling up your reel with braid to how to uh, rig some of our different baits and, and, and lures, creature baits, these types of things. So there's a whole heap of videos there to kind of get you started. And today we're going to kind of bring all of that together and hopefully catch a few fish and show you how simple and easy lure fishing can be. You don't need to go out for the whole day. You can grab 10 minutes here, an hour there. It's really straightforward and simple to do and lots and lots of fun and it's also really good for the mind body and soul just to get away from that maddening world that we're living at the moment so hopefully today we're going to try and catch a few fish and uh, and I can show you what it's all about a little bit of watercraft and things in there as well so let's see how we can get on Uh oh So, coloured canal, quick little cast, and this little perch, couldn't resist it. Oh, lovely. There we go, look at that. Hey, 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 hey. Whoop, whoop, having a bit of a kick. Wanted that lure, there we go. Put that nice and safe out of the way. Here we go, lovely. Look at that. Beautiful perch. Cast into a feature, which was a little bit of an inlet. And just skipping that little two gram jig head across the bottom. And this lovely little perch fancied it for breakfast. 10 minutes, only been here for 10 minutes and just goes to show how quick and easy and versatile lure fishing can be. Everyone can squeeze 10 minutes in their day to catch a perch. <laughs> Let's get that one back. Go on. There we go. So we got another little, another little perch. Wanted the uh, spiky microfry. Beautiful little fish. Look at that lovely little perch. Lovely little perch. Wow. Definitely wanted that. So there we go, a little one caught from underneath my feet. I mean, if you look at the size of that lure, let's take that one out. Yeah, you can see the size of the lure. They are greedy little things, Perch, greedy little things. And it's quite hard for him to get that in his mouth. And all the way back, he was just pulling on that tail, just like that. He was pulling on the tail on the way back in. And what happens is when they get to the edge of the bank, you can just lift and lift, lower and lift, lower and lift, just down by your feet. And you can quite often see a little bit of flashing and a little bit of silt coming up. And then quite often, if you lift it up to the surface and drop it back down, the jig head will go down and just stop in the silt like that. And then they come down and go and they grab it and, and you can catch them after them playing all the way back in. So, whoop. beautiful little pristine perch. You can see how they get big quick. <laughs> So you've got a nice feature there, you've got a bit of water coming in. It's always going to do loads of things. It's going to add some current to a still canal. It's going to add a bit of oxygen, especially in the summer. It's going to colour it up a little bit as well. So it does a few things and it can change the temperature. So it's not just a bit of water coming in, it's a hell of a feature when you, when you look at canals like that. So what I'm doing is um, 
looking for things like that. Fish can quite often be in open water as well, especially on pressured venues and pressured canals, which, you know, there's a lot of lure angling going on at the moment. So don't neglect open water. Always look for signs of life on canals, fish moving, scattering, cormorants, uh, kingfishers, all these types of things. They're all clues. They're all part of the jigsaw to be able to try and catch. Um, and, and that would be another part of the jigsaw there. And then, I, you know, I've got, it's very coloured. I've got the... Um, lemon tiger lure on today so it's a really nice bright visual lure i've looked at it in the margins i can see it a foot away which means they can with polar eyes which means they can see it a fair bit further away with their eyesight and then all i'm doing now is just it's a very light rod i'm just skipping the lure it's only a two gram jig head just skipping it back now and again you pick up the odd bit of leaf or the odd little bit you can just reel it in take it off flick it back out there again you don't always get a clean cast you know there's a lot of trees and things around here but you can just try and skip it back across the bottom and you're just looking for those little plucks and those little pulls. Each place like this is probably worth maybe about a dozen casts. A couple around the clock is what you know is, is a good rule of thumb. So you'd start here and work all your way around. If you did think that you had a little pluck at one o'clock, go at one o'clock again. Go all the way around, then go back to one o'clock again, just because you've given that one which had a little pluck a little bit of a rest. So you're just going along and just little flicks of the rod tip. With the right rod and balanced tackle, you should be able to actually feel the two gram jig head just tapping on the end of the rod. When you, when you lift the rod tip, you should feel the end of the rod just having a little, little pluck on it where you're actually lifting that, that, that um, jig head off the bottom. Just better one. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So you've got a canal boat in front of me. Got a canal boat in front of me. And there he goes. That's what you call catch and release, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even bother netting that one. I just let it go because I had a really good look at it. Nice little perch that as well. There we go then. So a lovely little perch. Whoa. Now, that perch got a little leech on it there. Look at that. Oh, that's a fat perch. So we take that lure out, put that down there. There we go, look at that. Pretty perch. There we go, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> so, first things first, you turn up at the canal. Where do you fish? There's so many features in canals. And what you can do is utilize your time because you may only have that one hour, half an hour, two hours. You might have the whole day. You might be able to go exploring. But the great thing about lure fishing and light lure fishing is that you can just do it very quickly and uh, you can shoot out the house and, and, and grab the rod and the net and the unhooking mat and, and away you go. So let's look at some features. If I was to turn up here, I walk down the slope, straight away I see a pontoon there. So I could vertical jig. Don't stand on the pontoon, just vertical jig, lift up and down, lift up and down, lift up and down. What you've got to remember is, you know, I'm talking about perch predominantly at the moment and uh, they love cover. They absolutely love, sh love being in the shadows, basically. So that's a good place to start. I turn up here, my nearest bit without me making any noise at all, not walking on the decking or anything like that, is just to creep along heel to toe and just vertical jig all the way along it and therefore you're doing your nearest feature where you're not going to spook them. Once you've done that and you think you've had fish or you think, okay, I don't think there's fish there, then you can start working around the clock and working around the edges of the boats, working in between the boats. And also you've got reed lines, bramble cover as well. All these things are absolutely fantastic features to start having a go and seeing if you can catch a few fish in a limited amount of time. Sticking to the same lure because it's still working. Two gram jig head. Six pound fluorocarbon there. It's quite heavy but there's a few snags around. And a nice little fat perch. And that was just vertical jigging along the end of that structure there, along the end of this lock wall. We've got a nice little fat plump perch. Very aggressive little fish. Great fun on balanced light tackle. And that's what it's about, having a bit of fun, getting a bit of fresh air, walking along your canal whilst being able to catch little fish like these with a good chance of a bigger one coming along.
lure fishing can possibly to somebody new to the sport seem a little bit daunting um, because there's lots of different types of rods lots of different types of reels but it's actually really simple if you're going to start off and you're looking at going for perch like we are today on the canal then a 1000 size reel is perfect and when you're using a light rod like this rod here is 4 to 17 gram or you might get a 1 to 8 gram 5 to 10 10 to 15 gram those types of rods really are perfect for perch fishing and you're making them nice and balanced so you don't want to put a great big 4,000 times reel on, on a rod like this. It would be too heavy, too clumbersome, it would be too big, totally unbalanced, and uh, you need probably an awful lot of braid on there as well. Whereas when you get these little 1,000 size, they quite often take 100 meters of braid. Um, they're light, the rod weighs next to nothing, and it's super light and really well balanced. That means you can just carry it around. It's really light, simple, the net's there unhooking that at the back I've got forceps I've got all my lures in here some traces if I need them some scissors spare pair of forceps everything's on me so I can just go for a walk I don't have to keep putting things down picking them up or anything like that I'm just there I'm ready to go fishing so that's that's what I would recommend for kind of light perch work is is anything up to let's say about 15 gram that sort of size for when you're doing these types of canals and, and, and light work if you were going to kind of step up and you were going to go towards um, doing some pike, you can still catch pike on these rods. You can put a trace on, um, especially in these canals. You know, if you catch catch a 10 pound pike out of a canal like this, it's a very, very good fish. Um, so it's, it's all relative to where you fish. Um, but if I was purposely going for pike and saying, right, I'm going out piking for the day, um, I probably wouldn't be using my perch rod like that. I'd actually be targeting them and I uh, pike, so I probably have slightly bigger lures. Um, so this is uh, a two and a half thousand size reel. And then that one's, the last one's loading up with kind of braid anywhere between five and 10 pound. And then a fluorocarbon leader of anywhere between probably five and ten pounds um, whereas here I'm loaded up if it was a canal like I'm doing today you know I've got a Salmo sweeper on there it's not the heaviest of lures but it would be too heavy for my perch rod and on there I've got 30 pound braid so quite strong braid there and I've got a nice titanium trace on there as well to make sure it doesn't get bitten off and that's because I'm using a heavier rod as well those are kind of the key things you're looking for when you're looking at rods and reels to be able to kind of suit the style of lure fishing you're doing. So we've looked at uh, rods, reels, um, uh, how you're going to set up, where you're going to cast, what do you do if you get a fish? Well, you're probably going to need to net it. So here's one of our nets here. These are the speed flow and we've also got the street fighter nets as well. So just quite simple. It extends where you go, fish into the net. So they, they're made like this so that they can, um, they can clip onto your belt like I have mine. Um, the street fighter ones are really good. So that just goes in, I clip it on my belt there on this. Um, the street fighter ones, quite often you could be looking at a piece of water and thinking okay there's probably fish in there but there's no way I'm going to be able to net them well actually if you look at the Street Fighter range they've got telescopic handles so you can actually flick the handles out and you can actually net fish which are way 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 out of reach so they're also really good for kind of around marina walls if you're doing a bit of sea fishing or anything like that or uh, around locks and things like that so they're really good when you've got high banks um, so getting a net is absolutely paramount um, and then like today there's a bit of grass but quite often on canal fishing and, and lure fishing you could be fishing where it's it's concrete or it's hard so um an unhooking mat this is one of our light ones again that can just go in my backpack or it can clip onto the side of me so you can net the fish and then you can either rest it or you can just pop your net out flip it out and put it straight on there and then you can net it and a lot of the mats you can get and we do them as well you can have also uh, measuring charts so you can actually measure the size of your fish so you need net and a mat Another important thing, when you actually hook the fish and get it in, you could be having treble hooks on the lure or you could be having a single hook on the lure. But either way, it's really important to carry, I keep my nair so they're really easy, is forceps. So you can actually, if you have a pike, the last thing you want to be doing is putting your fingers anywhere near the lure when it's in its mouth. Not just because they have teeth, but also because hooks are sharp. And if the fish was to flip 
you could actually get the hook in your finger, which is probably more likely than the teeth. So good forceps are vital. Then I always carry some cutters. Really, really important for cutting braid, especially. You won't do it with your teeth. It's not worth trying. Um, and I also carry a spare pair as well. So I've got two. Um, I carry a couple of different types of fluorocarbon leader. Some jig heads. Some drop shot hooks. Because you never know. Sometimes they want it really slow. Um, and some traces as well. It's always good to have some traces as well bits and pieces of terminal tackle so you, you can adapt from per pike to perch with the traces um, some pike lures perch lures the list goes on but it sounds like I'm overcomplicating it really you just need a couple of lures some jig heads net mat rod reel some fluorocarbon and then off you go for half an hour hour two hours fishing and if you think about it at the end of the day when you finish work or even before you go to work half an hour at that time of day especially at this time of year is probably better than most of the day anyway with the light levels fading etc etc so you know fishing when it's absolutely key timings is massive in fishing so rather than just flogging the bank to death all day um, actually you can nip out for an hour here and an hour there and get the best fishing ever anyway so time is of the essence when it look when you look at fishing making the most of it whenever you can